Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J-Man Time and today I have a video on homemade and improvised the Soviet tanks of the Second World War. Now, in 1941, the Axis forces led by Germany invaded the Soviet Union, and as a result, the Soviets suffered a large number of, of their tanks and armored vehicles being either destroyed or captured during the first few months of Operation Barbarossa. And during this time period, the Soviet leadership was in a cluster, and as a result, many of the Soviet ground commanders took it into their own hands to either manufacture existing tanks, or in some rare cases, they manufactured homemade or improvised tanks in order to replace their losses during the opening stages of the war on the Eastern Front. So here are some of the rare improvised and, in some cases, experimental homemade and improvised Soviet tanks of the Second World War. And the first vehicle on the list is the ZIS-30, also known as the T-20 Komsomolets. And this was an improvised tractor-based tank destroyer that was constructed between September and October of 1941. Now the ZIS-30 was actually constructed by the tractor factory number 92 based in the city of Gorkney, which was one of the cities in which the Germans were advancing towards. And this vehicle here was literally just a 57mm ZIS-2 anti-tank gun fused to the chassis of a T-20 Komsomolets light artillery tractor. Only a hundred of these improvised tank destroyers were constructed between September and October of 1941, and they were issued to 15 different Soviet tank and infantry brigades. These vehicles were largely constructed for the defense of Moscow, and between September and April of 1941-1942, the invading German forces attempted to invade and annex the, the capital of Moscow, which was the capital of the Soviet Union. And during this time period, the Soviets brought out all of their big guns during this battle. That includes some of their improvised armored fighting vehicles, and this here, the ZIS-30 tank destroyer tractor tank was one of the improvised weapons used during this battle. Only a hundred of these homemade ZIS-30s were actually constructed between September and October of 1941, and during the Battle of Moscow, they actually assisted in destroying at least a hundred German tanks and armored cars that were involved in the offensive towards Moscow. Ultimately, the Soviets would push the Germans away from Moscow, and so the German invasion of Moscow ended in failure. The ZIS-30 served all the way up until the end of 1942, when the remaining vehicles were converted back into either T-20 Komsomol artillery tractors and 57mm ZIS-2 anti-tank guns which were still needed on the Eastern Front. In terms of their specification, this vehicle had a main armament of a once 57mm ZIS-2 anti-tank gun. A secondary armament was one 7.62mm DT machine gun. Its armor thickness was only 7 to 10 millimeters, which made it pretty vulnerable to most German anti-tank weapons being used in 1941. For example, the German 37 and 50 millimeter pack anti-tank guns. Its speed was only 50 kilometers per hour or 25 miles per hour, so as fast as the standard Soviet medium tanks at the time and the vehicle had a crew of two to four. This vehicle did not have an enclosed turret like most tanks, so the crew was pretty much exposed to small arms fire. Only the small 7mm gun shield was geared to protect them from enemy infantry fire. The next vehicle on the list is the KHTZ-16, or the Karakov Tank Plant number 16 or Model 16, and this was actually a Soviet improvised self-propelled tractor tank constructed in 1941. These vehicles were constructed in the Kharkov tractor plant based in the city of Kharkov. They were also produced in the Stalingrad tractor plant or STZ based in the city of Stalingrad. These were based on the Soviet STZ-5 artillery tractors, and these were converted into self-propelled guns. These vehicles were armed with one 45mm 
20K main gun, which was the same gun fitted to the T26 and BT5 series of light tanks. The secondary armament was either one or two 7.62mm DT light machine guns. Its armor thickness was between 4 and 25mm and it had a speed of 20 km per hour or 12.4 miles per hour, making it much slower than the ZIS-30. The vehicle had a crew of three, and only 60 to 90 of these improvised, self-propelled guns were built. These vehicles are sometimes known as the SU-45 Karakov, and these vehicles were constructed for the defense of Kharkov, the defense of Leningrad, the defense of Poltava, and for the Bryansk front as a whole. These vehicles were constructed between 1941 and 1942, and they were usually paired with either T-26 light tanks or T-27 tankettes. Now, during the battles of Kharkov, Leningrad, and Poltava, many of these vehicles were either destroyed or captured by the German and Romanian forces. And at least 12 to 16 of these vehicles were actually captured by the Romanian forces and were later pressed into service with Romanian troops all the way up until 1943. So these vehicles were also used by Romanian forces. And in the hands of Soviet forces, these vehicles were mostly used as scare weapons, really. Their jobs were to assist the T-26 and T-27 tanks during their assault against the German defensive lines or offensive lines. But just like the T-26 and the T-27, their armor wasn't very thick, and as a result, they were vulnerable to all of the German anti-tank weapons being used, especially the 37 and 50mm anti-tank guns, and later the 75mm anti-tank guns employed by the German-led forces. Overall, most of these vehicles were either destroyed or captured in combat, and only a few of them managed to survive past 1942. Eventually, they were taken out of service and replaced with the standard issue T-34 medium tank. There was also a second version of this vehicle, a rare version known as the STZ Nati Moonsound Panzer. And this was actually spotted during the Battle of the Moonsound Islands, which occurred near the Finnish border. So this is a rare version that didn't have a 45mm gun, but was either armed with a 37mm Soviet gun, or was only fitted with a machine gun in place of the 47mm gun. And so that is the rare version of this vehicle. Now, that wasn't the only homemade tank. There was a ton of other ones. Another more famous homemade or improvised tank used by the Soviet forces was the NI tank, also known as the Odessa tank. And this was a series of improvised tanks that were constructed in 1941 also. The NI tank, or Na Ispong tank, or the Fright tank, or the Fear tank, was another Soviet infantry support improvised tractor tank that was constructed for the defense of Odessa, which was another major city in the Soviet Union. These vehicles were constructed by the January Uprising Factory based in the city of Odessa in August 1941. So these vehicles were constructed at the very start of Operation Barbarossa when the Soviets started losing large numbers of tanks and armored cars to the advancing German forces. These tanks were employed between 1941 and 1942. They were mostly used in the Odessa region and only 68 of these vehicles were constructed. The main armament was one 45mm K-20 main gun or the Soviet 37mm Model 15R mountain gun. The secondary armament was usually two 7.62mm DT machine guns, and these vehicles had an armor thickness of between 4 and 10 millimeters. These vehicles were very slow, having a speed of only 7 kilometers per hour, or 4.3 miles per hour, and they had a crew of 2 to 4. Now again, these vehicles were deployed around the Odessa area, but ultimately Odessa was captured by the Germans in the, towards the end of 1941. And during the capture of Odessa, the Germans actually captured a number of these vehicles. The Soviets would later recapture Odessa, but during the fighting between the capture of Odessa and the recapture, many of these vehicles were employed by both the Soviet army and some of the Soviet partisan units that were stuck behind enemy lines. And in total, about 12 of these vehicles were also captured by the German and Romanian forces and were pressed into service as improvised tanks with the Axis armies all the way up until the end of 1942. 
where they were finally replaced with more modern German tanks or more modern the French tanks that were captured during the French campaign of 1940 and were later redeployed to the Eastern Front. So these vehicles actually served in both the Soviet Army but also were used by the occupying Axis forces during the fighting in the Odessa region. And these are the most famous tank, as there are many of these still surviving at various museums in Russia and Ukraine. There was also a smaller version of the NI tank, known as the Mini NI, or the Miniature Na Espong, or the Na Espong II. And this was an even rarer version of the vehicle, and used a smaller civilian tractor instead of an artillery tractor. This vehicle had a main armament of either a 137mm SA-18, which was the same gun used on the FT-17, and the uh, MS-1 light tanks. The armor thickness is unknown. Some of these vehicles were fitted with one machine gun. The armor thickness is unknown. The speed is unknown. But the vehicle had at least one or two crewmen. Only one vehicle was ever photographed of the second smaller version of the NI tank. And this photograph actually comes from the occupying German forces who actually tested the vehicle to see how it would run and would use the vehicle as target practice for their Panzer III and Panzer IV medium tanks. And then there's the final improvised tractor tank and that is the SU-S2 or the self-propelled gun S2. And this was a rare experimental improvised tractor tank constructed and in the city of Kharkov in 1941, this was constructed by the plant number 75, also known as the Chalabinsk factory, tractor factory, or motor plant, based in the city of Kharkov, just like the first two tanks on the list. Only one prototype was constructed between September and October of 1941, but the Germans were advancing towards the city of Kharkov so fast that the Soviets ended up stripping the plant down and transporting all of the equipment to the Far East for manufacturing of the T-34 series of medium tank. So only one prototype was constructed before the plant was ultimately stripped down and sent to the Far East. This vehicle had a main armament of a 1 to 122 millimeter M30 howitzer. A secondary armament was either one or two 7.62 millimeter DT machine guns. Its armor thickness was four to 20 millimeters. Its speed is unknown, but it had a crew of between two and four. If this vehicle had been produced like the other ones on the list, then it would have been the heaviest and most powerful of the improvised tanks as the 122 millimeter howitzer could take out most of the German medium tanks being used, although I doubt it could take out a Tiger tank as those were entering service later on in 1941 on the Eastern Front. There was one other tank that I still cannot find an image of, and that is the Vershilovitz 105K, which was an improvised tractor tank based on the Vershilovitz artillery tractor which was a heavy-duty artillery tractor used to tow some of the heavier 122-203mm to 203 millimeter Soviet howitzer systems. One of these experimental homemade tractor tanks were constructed in 1941, but unfortunately there's no photographic evidence of it, and the main armament was actually a 105mm field gun fitted to an armored-up tractor. Now, I can't find any photographic evidence of it, but it does exist in the Soviet archives. And that's pretty much it. These were the homemade tractor tanks of the Soviet Union from the Second World War. If I had to choose my favorite, obviously it would be the SU-S2, as that was the most powerful of the homemade tractor tanks that was actually constructed, although it never entered production like the other vehicles on this list. So what do you all think of these homemade tractor tanks of the Soviet Union? Please tell me in the comment section below, and until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.